So in this video, I'm talking about the reactions of carbohydrates used in different reagents. So what if I take D fructose? So this is D fructose. If I take fructose, what if I take fructose and, and, and add sodium borohydride? Well, this is a reducing agent. So I'm always looking at my carbonyl. Okay, and in fact, what I'll actually create when I look at this is that I'll create an alcohol. Okay. There's my CH2OH. So this is the product that I'm going to get. Okay. So we get D. This is actually called D glue. This is actually D glucetol. But we get a mixture. Okay. We get, get a mixture of D glucetol plus this product here. Okay. Now this is actually called D mannitol. So I get a mixture of the products. Okay. And the reason, and you could think of this as what, these are actually, um, uh, these are epimers, right? So only one Carl center change. Okay. So the Carl center, notice that the Carl center of interest that changed was this one. Everything has pretty much stayed the same. One, we have it, uh, as configurated, this is R configurated, okay? And so we'll get a mixture anytime we add this carbonyl here with sodium borohydride. Okay, now let's talk about um, some reduction here. So this is actually a reduction, and let's use in this case of beta D glue called paranose, okay? So the open chain aldehyde looks something like this. There's my CH2OH. And so the open chain molecular fissure projection looks something like this. Okay, now what if we took this molecule and add hydrogen gas in some sort of catalyst. In this case, we could use, oh, we use nickel. Okay, what would happen? Well, I'll actually reduce the ketone. I will actually reduce the carbonyl to an alcohol. Okay, so that's the only change in the molecule. So in, in this case, I'll actually reduce the carbonyl to an alcohol. And so in this case, I'll get my CH2OH and I'll still have the rest of the molecule. H and there's your CH2. Oh, so the difference that changed was the functional groups. I get an alcohol. Okay. So when I take um, beta D glucoparanose and I add nickel, I get the alcohol. It doesn't have to be beta D glucoparanose, it could be anyone. Okay. Now let's talk about the oxidation by bromine. So Let's talk about oxidation by bromine. Okay. Now, what if I take glucose? We know what glucose looks like. Six membered ring. There's your R. There's your S, R, R with the alcohol being on the right. Okay, so there's glucose here. So if we, so happens that if we take glucose and we add Br2 in water, okay, what is the product that we'll get? Actually, I'll generate a carboxylic acid on this, on this, on the, on the, on the aldehyde carbon here. So, so that's my alkenal grid. There's my alcohol now. So there's my carboxylic acid. And everything pretty much stays the same. There's CH2O8. So we get the carboxylic acid. So this is the difference between the two molecules from an aldehyde to a carboxylic acid when we use bromine in water. 
so it, it's not it's a it's a, a fairly nice oxidize oxidization uh, oxidizing agent but it, it's not that strong enough and so we could also look at the oxidation by nitric acid Okay, and so we look at nit uh, nitric acid oxidation. Let's look at the same molecule, glucose. Okay, so if we take glucose and we add uh, nitric acid, well, I'll actually do is I'll generate the dicarboxylic acid. Okay, I'll generate the dicarboxylic acid, and so we could. Okay, so I'll generate the dicarboxylic acid. So notice the difference. I generated two carboxylic acids. Okay, so uh, oxidizes both oxidizes both the alcohol and the aldehyde. Okay. Now you you can also do oxidization by Tom's reagent. Okay, and this will tell you actually if you have a reducing sugar. Okay, so if you take um, glucose in its open chain form, this is your aldehyde. And there's your CH2OH, there's one, two, three, four. There's your R. There's your S, there's your R, there's your R. Okay, you just fill in the hydrogens. Okay, so I have an example, I take glucose and we know it's Tom's region. It's silver nitrate, AgNH3, two plus. We take this and add it in hydroxide. Tom's test. What I'll actually do is that I'll create ammonia and uh, the carboxylate. And so in this case, I'll create there's your CH2OH. your OH is your hydrogen and there's your OHH so last you create the carboxylate plus we know we form ammonia the ammonium ion solution plus uh, silver okay and this is our silver mirror so we get the reducing sugar so how do we know if a sugar is reducing well if it's if it's stable in base okay if it's stable in base so um if, if we draw the the structure of uh of uh if we draw the structure of glucose okay so if i look at the structure of glucose we'll draw the chair confirmation so here's a structure here's a chair confirmation of glucose okay Okay, so there's glucose, okay? And we know glucose is a reducing sugar, but why? Well, glucose is not stable to base. And because of it's because of this 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 alcohol group here, this alcohol group here, okay? So this glucose is a reducing sugar. Now, something like acetals are actually not reducing sugar. Okay, and so if I draw the structure of an acetal, so let's draw in this case. Uh, and actually, glycosides are actually very uh, uh, non-reducing sugar, but let's draw a chair confirmation to, to, to get across the point here. So if I look at the structure of an acetal, as this OCH3 group here. Okay. Let's draw oxygen. There's your oxygen, there's your hydrogen. 
okay and uh, there's your CH2OH okay what else is on there there's there's um yeah I'm forgetting this there's my alcohol there's an alcohol there okay well notice the only difference in the molecule is this functional group here this is an ether ether type of functional group we call this this is an acetal this is an acetal now these are non-reducing sugar and the reason why is because this is table to base remember from what or chem one or two remember we talked about ethers and we say you know ethers typically react with acid okay against protonation and we could break that bond in base however uh, we, we can't react ethers with base and so this is the reason why it's a non-reducing sugar and so in fact we'll get a negative test for silver mirror test and we'll deal with the tolerance reagent okay so that's the difference between non-reducing sugar and, and reducing sugar and it's the idea of this this acetal group here and actually glycosides are acetals okay glycosides they're acetals which are stably base okay and again you could see that this carbon chain could go ch2 ch3 c and you know, it doesn't matter this functional group here is what we care about, and that's the idea behind the non-reducing non-reducing sugar and a reducing sugar.